from votes to the vaccine. Over 10.8 million COVID jabs have been administered since the rollout began earlier this year. But have we picked up from our early August slump? Let's speak now to Professor Barry Shub, Chair of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19 Vaccines. Prof, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I wonder if you can update us on what you know about the pace of vaccinations. We know that we were hitting a really good high of around 220,000 jabs a day at the end of July. We dropped by around 100,000 jabs a day by mid-August. Are we picking up the pace? Uh, yes, good evening. So I think we are. We are. We're not there yet. Uh, I think we've got to, I think the last was about 246,000 per day, which certainly is much, much better than the 150,000, what, about a week ago. So, yes, the pace has picked up, uh, but there still is a way to go. We, we were hoping uh, to get to, what, 300,000 by the end of the month. And the end of the month is, what, pretty soon now. It's going to be the end of the week, in fact. So, um, yeah, hopefully we're going to get to that pace, uh, to, to, that, uh, to that, um, that level. So, yes, the pace has picked up. I think it's picked up because, of course, the age um, uh, down to 18 plus has uh, recruited quite a large number of individuals. So we need to kind of uh, up the pace and maintain the pace to get to all adults by the end of the year or beginning of early, uh, early next year. So the latest uh, numbers I'm seeing is sort of between 10 and a half and 10.8 million jabs given out. Do you have an update on that? Is it perhaps higher? Uh, no, I think that's a figure more is that I've got as well. All right. OK. Well, so it continues and it seems to be picking up pace. That's good. I want to speak to you about the news coming from the United States of America yesterday, that Pfizer has now been fully authorized for use in that country. So it's no longer been given out on emergency basis, as all other vaccines currently are. I want to ask you whether it's just a matter of time now before here in South Africa, SAPRA, uh, makes the same decision, uh, bearing in mind that I understand it's based on the data. I think so. It's based on the data. I think it's going to be based on international data, be based on local data, local data obviously being the main data source. Uh, and I think it, you're right. I think it's a matter of time. Uh, the emergency use, I mean, unfortunately, people get a little bit kind of frightened by the term emergency use. It's really the kind of structure in which it is licensed, in which it is approved. And the approval is really based on the fact that there has to be a vigilant following up, what we call pharmacovigilance, how the vaccine is behaving as, as it's rolled out in the whole population. That's really the difference. It's not really a factor that, um, that the vaccine is any less safe, for example, because quite a few people have, have asked me about that. Now, does emergency use mean, you know, it's, it's because of the uh, contingencies of the disease uh, and that the, that the vaccine may be less safe? It's not that at all. It's just that the kind of the um, follow-up needs to be a lot more rigorous when it's an emergency use as when it's compared to complete uh, licensing. A lot of people have cited this emergency use uh, um, provision as their reason for being hesitant. Uh, as you're yeah. explaining, it's not really any reason to be hesitant. But you've worked in the field of vaccines for many, many years. Um, right. Some of the, the concerns we're seeing uh, from people who are hesitant or, or actually very anti-vaccine, is, yeah. is this more than you've ever seen in South Africa? Or is this kind of the sort of thing you've become used to? You know, Sally, this is the first time in history, actually, that we've rolled out a universal adult immunization. Our universal immunization is out now. When I say universal for the whole population, that's really been in children. Uh, and of course, we had a lot of children, a lot of experience in, in rolled out in children. But this is the first time we rolled out the entire adult population. We've had like flu vaccination. It's not the kind of same universal rollout. So I think the hesitancy may be a reflection of that that uh, funny people are more hesitant when they're adults than with their children. But uh, because these vaccines are really the safest vaccines that we've ever had. Um, but, you know, because they're new, they're new platforms and new designs, uh, and it's new disease as well, uh, mm. people are questioning. And I think these are questions which are justifiable questions. And as professionals, we need to answer them and give, and give the reasons why they are safe. Yeah. I want to speak now to you about the WHO Africa Regional Committee meeting today. Uh, Dr. Tedros Khebreyesus was speaking about two things. I want to, I want to deal first uh, with the impact of the pandemic on the rollout of childhood vaccines in South Africa. Uh, it's, it's been flagged by the WHO, um, you know, for example, uh, 
polio was declared completely eradicated, I think, a year ago in Africa, and now it's popping up again. Uh, do you know the South African situation in terms of our, um, you know, drop-off in childhood vaccinations? So I don't really have it quantitatively. I know there certainly qualitatively has been a drop-off, even a drop-off in a lot of the kind of maintenance health, public health uh, programs, whether it's childhood vaccination, whether it's people living with HIV and their medications, their monitoring, uh, TB monitoring and so on. This is universal throughout the world for a number of reasons. One is obviously the kind of diversion of health resources to some extent, but I think more importantly, people are more reluctant to go to the places where COVID exists, in the hospitals and the clinics. And, and this is manifested as a dropout in all these public health maintenance programs. I don't have the figures for South Africa, but I'm sure that it is there as well, in mm. all these things, maternal health care as well. I want to speak to you about another issue raised at this regional meeting of the WHO. Um, vaccine equity, as we know, has been a big issue and a big problem. Africa at the back of the queue. In South Africa, we seem to be fairly fine now regarding supply. Um, but I'm wondering if we will all, as a continent, go back to the back of the queue if we all need boosters. Yeah, the issues of boosters is, is, uh, is one which is being discussed very, very intensely at the moment. Um, because obviously provision needs to be made for the extra supply of these vaccines if we are going to have boosters. The one thing I can say is that certainly the studies up to now, uh, and these are reassuring studies, that the durability of the immune response, that was how long and how effective that immune response has lasted after vaccination, has been quite reassuring even for six months, in fact up to about even 280 days, there's still good robust, effective immunity. So it's just to reassure because I think we need to accept that these vaccines are no guarantee against protecting against infection and certainly no guarantee of protection against mild illness. The main aim of the vaccine was to protect against, protect against severe illness and hospitalization and of course mortality. And it has been very effective. So that's, that's the real the main goal. People will get mild illness even after vaccination, um, and that's not unexpected. These are very good vaccines, but no vaccine is absolutely perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. That is uh, Professor Barry Shoup, Chair of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19 Vaccines.